Hey, what's up? How are you? I thought I'll make a video so that I can update you on exactly what it is that I've been doing for the past few months. So the first question, will the tailoring series of how to make a jacket continue? The answer to that is yes, it will continue. What happened was I started this series probably like last year or something like that with the intention to provide valuable resources for tailors who don't have access or the money to go to an expensive tailoring course or don't have access to a location where other tailors are and so that they could continue learning or develop their passion um, through these videos until they were ready or they had the resources or the finances to go to a tailor or to do a course. And as I started the series and I kind of like went through it, I got a lot of messages. Um, will there be a pattern? People asked. Are you going to provide a PDF? Will you show me how to draft? Can you help me out with this? I'd like to follow along, but I don't have a pattern. And so I thought, let me finish the video series, then post the pattern or provide a pattern. But then I thought, you know what? Actually, what I should do is I should stop what I'm doing, create a series for how to draft. And to do that, I had to kind of like get together all my research and all my thinking and everything that I was doing, formalize it and formulate it in content worthy material, uh, organize all of the the files and the techniques and the principles and then actually make the content for how to draft. But then I thought, well, if they know how to draft and they're going to make this jacket, I should also provide a series on how to fit. Now, it's not that easy to make a series on how to draft or how to fit that is actually going to be practical because most of the cutting systems or most of the fittings deal with so many layers of complicated intuitive processing that you can't just say, hey, once you put the jacket on, do this or do that, because your do this is connected to a hundred other do thises. And so if you just say to someone, do this or do that, it's just not going to work. And the same goes for a draft. So I didn't want to provide just like a point to point drafting system because, well, what difference would it make from any other drafting system. So what I did was I sat down, I extracted pretty much every principle that would be constant throughout any style or any material or any house style or preference or working system, and then boiled them down to the core fundamentals of pattern cutting rules, as to say. That took a long time. I was going through many, many tailoring books, reading through all of the texts, going and comparing all the different drafts and the reasons behind them. Some of them I had to figure out what the hell do, does this tailor mean and what do they mean? What does this have in common? It was about like between probably like, must have been like 180 books. I can count them, but what, whatsoever. So I did that. And then as I was doing that and preparing to make the series for um, how to draft and then how to fit, um, I got approached by Matthew Gonzalez and uh, Kimberly Lawton, who you know from Dobrik and Lawton. And we talked a little bit about what they were doing. They said they were making something uh, like a portfolio of references of common cutting faults or fitting issues and then how to solve them for themselves to have as a reference. And then they remembered that I was doing something on this uh, series and then they said, well, can we help you to speed up the process so that we could put this content out a lot quicker and then also just partake in the process of developing that. And so we got together, uh, we talked a little bit, just what the situation was, what their situation was, said yes. So we're working together and uh, what we are doing now is we are trying to expand and um, develop the content as much as possible because, well, you know, me on my own creating content, um, I get the feedback only after I put the content out there. So what we're doing now is we're actually running the content through them 
and then talking about it, see where we can make things simpler, where we can kind of like expand a little bit more on and then put the content out there so that it's already filtered a few times and improved. So I'm planning to share most of the meetings that we have. We have meetings uh, about every two weeks probably and we're going to be going through everything that I've been working on and then uh, things that we're working on together. You're going to see exactly how that's going to go. I thought it's good for you to see that process because you know, you can you can see the final result of how something of, of something that is created. But isn't it so much nicer if you see also the process that allowed that whatever it is to be created? You know what I mean? So we're doing that. I'm going to be posting that and we, I'm going to be sharing all the updates that, that we go through. So we are a team now. We are building uh, something incredibly uh in depth and uh, hopefully it's going to be something that you guys will value so i'm sorry it's taking a bit too long but it will definitely be worth the wait so what you're going to get is something 100 times more valuable than if it was just me doing what i was doing with whatever is already out there on youtube then there is also going to be complementary uh, content which i'm not going to talk about yet but uh, i'm sure most of you will appreciate that and uh, yeah, that's the update. So if you have any questions, just ask me and I'll try to answer them as, as good as I can. Um, and until then, just stay tuned. I started doing the research that I'm going to present to you in a very condensed and concise form because um, otherwise it would take too long, but we're gonna go through everything that I've kind of like figured out so far in detail as we're going to work on the project. So. Why did I do this and what exactly did I do? I thought tailoring can be made easier to learn because if something is easy to learn, you can learn it quicker, you can put it into practice. If you can put what you've learned into practice, you turn information into knowledge and knowledge into wisdom. That's, that's what I would say, right? So as everyone else, I've looked into tailoring books, trying to learn from there. I've been on Savile Road trying to look from the masters. I cannot learn from them because there are problems and I'm going to talk about these problems. I've condensed about hundred, between, I don't know exactly the numbers, between 160 to 180 books. I've gone through all of them, read all the texts, understood and figured out what the hell they meant. A lot of it was just noise. A lot of it was, um, testimonials from other tailors, weird stuff they put in there. And then a part of it was just like systems. And those systems were basically formulas that were someone's opinion about how a draft should be for that time, for that client, for that person who was performing the task, right? And well, that's good, but it's not good enough because I have certain questions that I'd like to be answered and you have certain questions and you have certain questions. But if you want to learn that from someone's formula, you can never know whether the formula that you're being taught answers your questions in the very end. It's like going to some astrologist and they are telling you like, hey, I'm, I can answer all your questions, but before you want those answers, you should pay me this. And then once you've paid me, I'll give you a puzzle. Once you've solved the puzzle, then you can decide for yourself whether that was the answer to your question or not. It's like a not, it's not a good deal. Nobody would go for that deal. So I thought, what's the best thing I could do? First of all, get rid of every opinion that you have about cutting. What is going to be in that system or in that book should be based on things that are there, whether you want it to be there or not. You cannot say, I disagree with gravity. You know, jump out of the building and see whether it agrees with you or not. You can't say that, right? So it's always there. You, you have to work around that. So I thought, okay, what are the constant things that we all deal with, whether we are making shorts, trousers, overcoats, felt, rubber suit, latex, whatever. It's always there. And then I thought, okay, it has to be some certain principles that I have to kind of like extract out of these books. So disclaimer number one, although I have formulated a lot of things in, that I'm about to present, although a lot of it comes from my thinking, 
by no means am I claiming that this is all new and it's never been done before. I don't think it's been done in this form. That's it. But other tailors, they have probably intuitively done these things. You know part of these things. So I've just brought everything together and tried to formulate it as, as, um, as powerful as possible. Let's say that. So, so far, the research is not done 100%, but it's in well enough to make it practical. The six principles of pattern cutting is what I've got so far. If you understand these principles and based on that, you create the draft, doesn't matter whether you're creating for David Bowie or for Michael Jackson or whoever, whether you're a soft tailor or hard tailor, you're this guy, you know, um, it will work and you can build upon that. So the purpose of this whole project was to harden intuitive conceptions. You know, when you work, there are things you assume, right? You think, I have a feeling about this, but there aren't any confirmations that you can say, aha, someone else thought exactly the same and someone else confirmed what I thought. Otherwise you have to talk to the hundreds of tailors. They're gonna not understand what you're talking about. They don't have the same framework, you know. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? You don't need to do that. You don't need to do this. So it's difficult to harden those, con those, those co concepts that you get in your mind. Provide ways of seeing. That's an important part. When you're observing and you're learning and you're creating, you need to have a very good way of looking at your work because otherwise you cannot develop it. You know, if, if, That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't develop their work. They just repeat what they have been taught. But if you know what to look for and you know how to look at your own work and create your own framework, then you're unstoppable. So to get to that, it's good for this system to provide ways of seeing. And I hope that this presentation does. Instill confidence and decisiveness. That's like even I am indecisive when I'm fitting at this moment because sometimes shit happens and you're like, well, I've never done this, but should I do this based on this technique or based on that technique? But you can easily get lost in that, right? It's like 20 things happening at the same time. It's good to be confident enough to say, that is what I'm going to do. That is what the solution is going to be. And that is the order in which I'm going to do that. So hopefully it does that. Make improvements easier and more systematic. That's another big problem. You know, we don't improve as much as we can within tailoring as an industry because a lot of it is just like, just do what he or she taught you. And if you have time, you know, and you don't have, you know, things to pay for and things to look after, then maybe you can come up with some ideas. Whereas if things are systematic from the very beginning, opinionless, you know, based on hardcore, ever present facts, then you can navigate yourself a lot better around that. Provide detailed understanding through ever-present and timeless principles based on physics and not opinion. So, okay, guys, here I, I have, I'm going to demand a little bit of mental energy. I'm going to talk a little bit um, about a few things, but I think it's important that I say it before we move on. So. What is pattern cutting, is my question to you. For you, not you don't need to answer what I want to hear. For you, what is pattern cutting for you? Um, creating a 2D representation of a 3D object that goes around a body or whatever it could be. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. What would you say? I mean, it's pretty much the exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, yes. Would you say it's... Art? I think it can be art. It can it be can art. It can look very beautiful. Yeah, Matthew, what do you think? Uh, yeah, it's it depends. I don't think everyday pattern cutting is art. Okay. I think that when we go and buy a t-shirt from mm -hmm. Primark or John mm -hmm. Lewis, mm -hmm. that's not mm -hmm. artistic pattern cutting, but yeah. pattern cutting at the level of couture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that's more on the artistic scale. Yeah, I fully agree with you guys. I, I've, I've written it down so far as as scientific art, and why would I say scientific art? Because part of it is artistic based on the opinions, taste, things like that. But 
to get to that, to be able to get to the artistic level, it's one and only technique. It's just technique all the time, nothing else, right? It's the techniques that create the aesthetics and sometimes the aesthetics that dictate what technique should be used. But eventually at the very core, it's technical. And if you really want to boil down the techniques, where you end up with is literally physics because you're dealing with material within a space, which is this air, this planet that we are inhabiting. And then those things have restrictions. So if you're working with fabric, you're not just working with fabric, you're actually working with a material that's restricted in X amount of ways. And what you're doing is you're working around those restrictions. You know, nobody pins things to the air. It just, you know, we, we, the reason why we do certain things is because we can't do other things, right? So a few reasons why pattern cutting is difficult. First of all, our brain is one lazy motherfucker and all it wants to do is to treat things in isolation. That's why strategizing in general is so difficult. Think 50 steps ahead. You can't, you can't. It's impossible. Even the, maybe if you're a master chess player, but even then you're planning based on the references that you had made in your mind from 30 years of chess playing, right? But even 30 steps ahead is just too difficult. A pattern is a few panels that relate to one another in a consistent way, but also in different ways, depending on how different each panel is in each situation. Now, computing that is very difficult. So, unless you have all the references based on previous experience. So, if you're trying to think of, okay, I'm going to change this shoulder line, what other areas are going to be impacted? I can't answer that for you because what's the model of garment that you're making, you know? Who is the figure for? What is the purpose of the garment? Is it a sports garment? Is it like, does it have gussets? Does it, you know, so all those things. And our brain resists us in that because it only wants to think, take in neck point means take in neck point. Whereas take in neck point means fuck up 10 other things, you know, and then get to the desired result that you want. So one reason is because our brain wants to make changes in isolation. The real world doesn't do that. The second thing is that even if you do know those relations, even if you know how the side seam relates to that other seam and that to the neck and the color, you're dealing with other factors that are kind of like almost invisible. So gravity is one of them, which I talked about. Suppression, which we're getting to, does weird things. It's, it's your best friend and your enemy at the same time. You have the movement of the body, the movement of the garment. You have the behavior of the fabric and uh, all those other things that you can't really put a finger on, but they're there, right? So um, maybe you take two jackets that are exactly the same. You just change the fabric and then you're in a different playing arena, you know? So visualization is difficult. If there's one skill that you should develop, at all times is to visualize things. And then the next skill is to actually communicate those visualizations with other people. You can have the greatest fantasy, if you cannot turn that into a physical example, whether it's through drawing or a garment or whatsoever, maybe a 3D simulation, then it's going to, it's going to be remaining fantasy. So, nowadays we have good software and those softwares they can help us to see how a pattern changes on the body. Maybe you've worked with them, you know, pattern cutting softwares, they do simulations and they're great, but they're only great up to the point that they're tools. They're not tutors, right? They're just tools. And what you really need is a good tutor so that they tell you how to use the tools, not the tool telling you how to use whatever you, you know, what, what you have to do. So. What happens is apprentices spend too much time with too little gains because eventually they don't get the, the perspectives that they need to get in order to develop and innovate beyond what they have learned. And I think if you can, you can call yourself a successful teacher if you teach people in a way that they outgrow you or they outgrow themselves without your help and your teaching. So they can expand on your knowledge, kind of. Some people say that the MacBook doesn't have a battery, but I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? You it's thought that was part of, the, part of the... Let's put 
performing circus tricks for you guys. Okay, some people say it's not good to simplify things because you dump things down and if you dump things down, you dump the students. Would you agree? Not necessarily, but okay. why? Well, well, I wouldn't say that's the logic. Uh -huh. I think, it, like we talked about earlier, you're editing out. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's how if you over edit. Mm -hmm. To for the purpose of simplification, mm -hmm. then you might not convey the necessary information. Right, right, right. Would you say that's that's the same process as dumbing things down or simplifying things, or that's just like for whatever reason uh, keeping things away from the presentation or the pres yeah the book or whatsoever? I think it's down to the intention. Mm -hmm. I think some people mm -hmm. just want to dumb things down for the purpose of mm -hmm. reaching a wider audience, and some yeah. people just want to simplify to be concise. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Over edit. Very good. Yeah, yeah. So those those are good extinctions. Uh, I would say, if you can simplify something with the intention of actually making it easier and less energy consuming, you know. Um, it's a good thing because it means, first of all, you understand it. You can't simplify things that you don't understand. If I don't, if I speak half Spanish, I can't make a complicated sentence easier because I just don't understand it well enough. But if you're like a master Spanish teacher, then you can say, well, instead of saying this very long sentence, just use these two words or, to, you know, you simplify it. I think simplification with the purpose of, of, simplifying things so that the person learning doesn't need to go through an ocean of excess information is good. A lot of pattern formulas and drafting formulas are too complicated. They're, they're just way too complicated. They leave out too much information and they require too many steps to take to achieve a draft. And so I am trying with this to simplify that so that you only focus on what matters. You don't need to do all of those hundred points, although there are going to be points, but we're simplifying those. Um, with that, I'm hoping to change a little bit how tailoring is taught today. Because now what, what happens is you go to a company and they teach you some half digested information, you interpret it in like a weird way, then you go on and you work on some projects, you encounter problems, then you try to use that half information that you've collected and you stumble across a set of projects and then hopefully you learn something. You can learn in a very good way if you do that, but the problem is your knowledge becomes internalized. So it even becomes unfamiliar to you. Right? And the best example is, what do you do when you prepare to go on a night's out? What do you do in, as a, as, as a, in the preparation phase? Um, put my makeup on, uh -huh. um, choose my outfit, mm -hmm. and um, do my hair, and mm -hmm. then go. Okay. Make sure how, do you, keys how, how do you put your makeup on? Um, the same way I've been doing it for a very long time. And, and what exactly are you doing? Um, a smoky eye. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't know, put mascara on my eyelashes, um, concealer. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're putting mascara on your eyelashes? Um, I take the wand out of the tube and I unscrew it and I put it and go. Yeah, 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 yeah. What you see, what, where I'm getting at. If I would push a little bit through, you would have to explain all the motorical movements that you make. First of all, you have to decide, you know, that's where the first thing. And then you go out, you, you point your eyes at the mascara. <laughs> then you decide to move one of your arms. You open up your fingers as your arm is stretching out, you know, you're contracting one muscle. You know, the, so you can go into really detail, but nobody, nobody thinks like that. You just do. And so the problem with internalized knowledge is that if you just do, you, you know how to do it, but you can't pass it on to someone else. And you've probably experienced this when you ask someone, hey, how do you do that part and that part? And they just give you some like a very vague answer. And it makes sense to them, but it doesn't make sense to you. Why? Because... 
a big sub a big task is made up of smaller subtasks, right? And each subtask has its own rules. So if you want to make coffee and you know one of the subtasks is grab for the coffee, but then that only implies that you know what coffee is. It's edible, you know how to grind it, you know that it should be extracted with hot water. So every subtask has its own rules and procedures. And when you're learning something new and it's difficult, those are the things that you struggle with, the rules of the subtasks. So kind of like the subtask of the subtask is what you're struggling with, not the task, right? And so if you're drawing, it's you don't know how to hold the, the thimble maybe, you know? That, that's a very micro routine that you have to get in place, otherwise you get into trouble other parts. So the aim with this whole thing is that if we are about to pass something on, it should be done in a way that you can learn that as quickly as possible without stumbling upon vague descriptions and vague moments. So you have to be decisive, you know, okay, this problem relates to this subtask, this subtask has these set of rules, and knowing those set of rules has been the journey for me. What are the subtasks and all the small rules that one needs to know to become a good cutter? And the last part of this is that if we don't do that, you create false logic and false logic is one of the biggest problems in the tailoring industry. Have you ever talked to someone and that person used the word and they had one definition for it and you had a very different definition and you, you think you're talking about the same thing, but it's just like two opposing poles. Mm -hmm. So in tailoring, we have that all the time. And It makes sense because it's evolutionary, it's, it's clever, you know, you look at what others are doing because that doesn't take energy from you having to come up with your own theory. You see where they fail and whether it's working for them and you kind of like either copy it entirely or you copy part of it. And as long as it doesn't look like they're starving and they're dying, then you just copy that, right? So that's why a lot of people do things, and when you ask them, why do you do that? They just say, I don't know, I just do it. You know, it's like, that's how, we, how we've always done it. You know, the, the, the cliche line of thinking. So some things seem true if you think three steps ahead. But if you think 30 steps ahead, then you see problems arise, and then you're like, was this actually a good idea? Mm. Was it actually a good idea to go to that country to meet that person? <laughs> you know what I mean. So, um, it's almost like trying to teach algebra without teaching how to count. Mm -hmm. You know, could you imagine? That's exactly right. Saying two x plus y squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the square root of the whole thing. Yeah. And someone doesn't know one, two, three, four, five. It's just, and I think a lot of that happens in tailoring. Yeah. You said we've had. We've had conversations where it's, why did you do that? Well, that's because that's what needs to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So hopefully we can bring a change to that. Now, let's go to the principles.